Thank you. Um, it's wonderful to be here with you on this gorgeous day on Earth. It's a bit grey, but it's gorgeous. On Mars, it's also gorgeous, but it's very, very cold. How many of you want to go to Mars? Put your hands up. A fair few. Let's see after 15 minutes whether you still want to go to Mars. <laughs> so, the 17th century was amazing because with telescopes, scientists opened up a whole new vista of what we could see, new worlds to see. And these new results very quickly entered the public imagination. So these, this is a, a beautiful painting from um, a, a French artist who'd taken um, Huygens' observations of Mars and produced this beautiful image that we can see before of this intricate French garden and Mars high above us. And telescope still, over 100 years ago, this is an image taken with the Greenwich Telescope recently, but this is a 100-year-old telescope, which at the time was the best in the world. You could see Mars here, but indistinct. What I'm going to do today is to take you to Mars. You can see features that are the size of the lines on the palms of your hands. So this is about the adventures of curiosity. I'm part of this huge science team of 400 scientists and 200 engineers working on essentially driving a small car on the surface of Mars and doing science. Not only looking at the landscape of Mars in the present day, but what I want you to do is, we, by looking at those rocks, we can go back in time, so it's space and time. We can envisage what Mars was like almost three and a half billion years ago. So just context, there's Mars. That's where we are. That's today. So we are 376 million kilometers away. So everything that comes forward now in this talk, just think about the distance and what we as humans, as engineers and scientists and everything else can make do in terms of exploring a new realm. So this is what Curiosity is doing at the moment. This is what it did on Tuesday. It actually lowered its arm down and carried out an experiment on the rocks over here. It imaged them and investigated the chemistry. At the moment, Curiosity is looking at this patch of rock over here. It's taking really high resolution pictures and it's doing chemistry experiments on those rocks, and the aim is to reconstruct what the environment was on Mars at the time those rocks were deposited. And we believe that those rocks were deposited three and a half billion years ago. So it's that space for time. We can use these rocks to reconstruct what the environment was like. Curiosity landed in Gale Crater, which sits on Mars' equator. It's a crater that's about 150 kilometers across big crater. What's wonderful about this is in the center of the crater, we've got this mountain here called Mount Sharp or Aeolus Mons. That's five kilometers high. That's a pretty big mountain. The beautiful thing about this mountain is that it's made up of stratified rocks. So these are layers upon layers. If you like, they're a book of the history of Mars at this particular time. And the aim was that we could land in this area between the crater rim and the mountain and drive and start working from the oldest rocks here, climbing progressively upwards. So it's like reading a history book. An imperfect history book because there's time missing, parts missing, but it gets us a reconstruction for one place, how the surface changed on Mars in one place. And that's what I want to show to you. Obviously, you all know about the audacious landing of Curiosity on this series of nylon tethers almost five years ago. And this was the first picture that Curiosity sent back to us. The one picture I saw and saw, right, we're safe. It's almost like one of these 1930s images of Everest or something like that with this gravelly plain and this Mount Sharp, five kilometers high, looming ahead of us, that being our main target. So this is Curiosity. It's the size of a Mini Cooper. It spends an inordinate amount of time taking pictures of itself. It's a 21st century rover. It's incredibly vain. So here's a picture. Look at that gaze looking at you. Here's another one. Here it is. She's looking at you again, examining the sand dune. It's an incredible laboratory here, packed full of scientific instruments, not only to measure the atmosphere, the chemistry, and the environment at the, at the moment, 
but also to delve back into the time. So what we can do is we can take, we can drill, we can take that rock powder, and we can look at the mineralogy of that rock powder, what minerals were present in those rocks, and we can look for what organic compounds might be present, what complex chemistry. So we can reconstruct overall what ancient Mars looked like for the first time in detail. And this is how the team works. It's a never-ending field trip. We've been on Mars for almost five years, and it feels like five years. It's been a very long time. We work virtually every day. And this is the science team at JPL in Pasadena and California in a big major meeting where we decide what the rover is going to be doing the next day. But overall, there's about 400 people on the team. And what we do is we all dial in and we communicate with the science team at JPL by telephone, by chat rooms, email, a whole host of things to get us all working together on deciding what this rover does. And we treat every day, it's a little bit like that life chart, every day the rover, tomorrow the rover could die, so we must maximize our science return. We must do something cool every day. And that's a really good way of getting over procrastinating. That rover isn't allowed to procrastinate when you've got 400 people hassling it. I wish my son had 400 people hassling him. He's a teenager. As you can see, the scientists are incredibly serious. So, the rover has driven 16 kilometers. This is where we've landed. We've driven this whole distance, and we are here now. And we want to, because we want to get to these exciting rocks at the base of Mount Sharp. And I'm going to show you this journey in a few slides that come up, upcoming. So the first discovery, this, these beautiful rocks here look a bit innocuous, but you can see these dark things here are pebbles. And they're rounded pebbles. And the beautiful thing about this discovery is that these rounded pebbles are in an ancient rock formation. And these were formed in ancient rivers. This was the first evidence ever that liquid water flowed on Mars, the first in situ evidence that we could be absolutely certain about this. And then we could actually image the river channel that these river cobbles came down from. This is a river channel that's been preserved on the Martian surface for over three billion years. It's fossilized in the landscape because the Martian climate dried out. It went arid. We got to Yellowknife Bay and we drilled in these rocks. And you can see the first drill hole on Mars to be able to actually analyze the chemistry. And again, oh yes, Curiosity took another picture of itself because she was so proud of her drill holes here. And an amazing discovery out of this was we actually discovered organic compounds in those drill finds. Now, these don't mean life, because they can be abiological, but the fact that we have preservation of organics means that by robot we can detect this, and that's one step forward in our search for life. And we carried on driving, and most of the journey has been driving to be able to get to the mount, base of Mount Sharp. But you can see these incredible images that we get where we can then analyze these rock formations and reconstruct the ancient environments. So you see a bunch of rocks. I see deltas migrating into a possible lake that existed once over here. When we took this image, we didn't know that. But then we got to a place called Pahrump Hills on the end of our drive, and we encountered we drove up a section like this, where we did a geological section. This is Pahrump Hills. This was the rover drive plan that we path planned. And at this stage, we didn't know what these rocks were. We have no idea. It's only when you get to within a few meters of the rock, you can start having an impression. So these could be any sort of environment. They could be really wet environments. They could be really dry environments. Wet is good for life. Dry is not good for life. And we discovered these rocks here. Look at these. Beautiful, laminated, fine-grained mudstones. And these tell us that these rocks were deposited in ancient lakes. It's very difficult to find an alternative explanation. So these were really long-lived lakes that existed on Mars for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years. It tells us that at three and a half billion years ago, Mars was a much nicer place than it is at the present day. And we also saw evidence of rivers flowing. These are evidence for currents flowing into these ancient lakes. And then we discovered recently possible evidence for mud cracks. These are mud cracks. Some of you may have seen these things. This tell us that the lakes dried out. So we have short-term climate changes on Mars. Evidence that the lakes dried out and it became continental. So environmental change on Mars. And it's amazing what these rocks can tell us about reconstructing both in time 
going back billions of years, but also in space, hundreds of millions of kilometers away with the fidelity that we can do on Earth. And we can build models of these changing lake cycles on Mars as presented in this graphic. So, okay, Curiosity is really proud of her results. And again, she drills another hole to try and reconstruct the chemistry of these rocks over here. This is at Okaruso. And we have all of these drill holes. You can see the color of the rocks changes, the drill powder changes, and it's because the chemistry is changing. So we're getting a flavor that the lakes are changing in their chemistry through time. And that's interesting, again, that we're able to reconstruct this fine scale environmental change on Mars in terms of probably local climate change, but perhaps this relates to global climate change on Mars many billions of years ago. And here's a very boring movie. Sometimes we stick our cameras out and see what happens and watch that. There's a little bit of a dust devil floating around. So sometimes we see exciting things. No aliens yet, but certainly some dust devils flying around on Mars as we speak. So coming up to where we are now, the next exploration begins. This was at Murray Buttes, where we have these beautiful rocks, more of these lake mudstones over here. And we're heading in this direction now. We're driving towards the base of Mount Sharp. And our goals here, this, and this is where we're going to be getting in the next few years, is to look at the detailed geology of these rocks over here. These rocks fill Gale Crater, and we have no idea what these environments represent. Are these also ancient lakes? Did Mars have lakes that extended up to millions of years? Or did Mars dry out? Did Mars, once it lost its atmosphere, do all of these rocks over here represent arid environments? And it's only when we get up close and personal with these rocks that we can reconstruct those. So watch out in the next few years. In fact, we're going to get to these rocks over here, the Vera Rubin Ridge, in um, about a month's time. We're going to be investigating those. And then we're going to be climbing progressively in the next couple of years in that next act of exploration and discovery. And sometime in the future, maybe 20, 30 years' time, we'll send humans to Mars. That will inevitably happen. It's not a que question of if, it will happen. And one can just hope that along with the, on, alongside the scientists and geologists who go to Mars, they will also send some artists, because this is a picture of Earth from Mars, and perhaps we'll get some artistic impressions of Earth, our own planet, from the surface of this now dry, dead planet, Mars. Thank you very much.